Free BC. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to yet another episode of 3BC. This is your girl, Joy, and I am with my three BCs, Casey the Alchemist, Chloe, and one solo. What's up, ladies? What's up? Hey, hey, hey. Hey. So, everything is everything. Everything. <laughs> So as you all know, we make no secret about this. We are ladies of a certain age. We are 40 something um, and we're shameless about the shit because we are about the shit and we look good as shit. Mm -hmm. So we don't have no problems with getting older. Um, But we're trying to one of the things we're trying to do is navigate this thing. And part of being able to navigate this thing a little bit more easily is talking about it. So one of the things we want to talk about today is invisibility. At 40 something, sometimes you feel invisible to your family or when you're trying to certain or whatever. One solo might not apply to you. Um, certainly to your kids. But uh, one of the scenes in um, within Oh, Lord, I just went blank. One one of the things in Better Things, and that's a show by Pamela Adlin on the FX channel. I love that show. Love that show. It's excellent. It is so well written. She's like my dream like writing partner. But um, she really delved into invisibility. She and her friends, at four, they, and they're cresting 50. They're in their early 50s. But you start to feel that now. And uh, we wanted to talk about it. Casey, you want to go first? Oh, Lord. Uh, it's so much to unpack. <laughs> We're going to try to go 15 minutes. There is a lot there. You know, I have to say that entering in 240, I still had the same 30 and below confidence. Um, I didn't start to feel invisible. Um, I'm yeah. probably 44, 45, 45 mm-hmm. years old. And that's when you walk into a room and nobody sees you Mm -hmm. you and and that's in that's in a in a bar in your own home you know Mm -hmm. you just feel unseen and it's like wait what happened like two days ago i was the shit Mm -hmm. and everybody was in my face and and everybody you know i was popping i was lit and then one day i woke up and nobody saw me i disappeared Mm -hmm. i wonder if sanaa lathan and no one will say that. I mean, but they're famous, so I guess that's different. But just they're in our age group. You know, I wonder if they would say that. Maybe if they weren't famous. That's I think they not would. But I think it may be changing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when you're younger, everyone is focused on you that's that may be older because they're looking at you because they see who they were they see promise they see all the possibilities you know there are lots of guys your age nobody's married yet nobody's divorced yet they don't have all these things on them so there's so much excitement going on when you're younger that you really don't pay attention to it and then people but you're still trying to find your way and so in a sense, there were times I felt invisible then because I didn't have life experience where I feel more visible now because I do. And there are people who may want to know about it. So I would say that I do like the millennials because what's odd is I'm finding like on my job, they are actually interested in what I have to say. We mm-hmm. always say that they're the entitled generation, but the ones who have been raised right and don't feel super special want to hear, how do I do this? I'm scared. I'm in this position higher than you, but I don't know what I'm doing. And they may not ever say it, but I've said, look, you don't let the bus run over me. I won't let the bus run over you. Let's mm-hmm. work together. I'm going to help you be better. And they actually listen. I have family members that include me where I would think at my age, I wasn't chilling with my 40-year-old aunt, um, but they want to hang with you. So I don't feel invisible in that regard because I have them around. But one thing I could say is part of my invisibility was also me allowing myself to be invisible because I didn't Uh feel like I was cute anymore or I had that pudgy stomach or I'm not that hot, whatever, because now I'm getting older. Well, guess what? 
it's some young dudes that love that pudgy stomach. It's some dudes your age. And if they don't, it's some older dudes that love it. If you are confident and believe no matter what age I am, I'm the shit and you command the room, your confidence will exude and make you more visible. So I feel like the the confidence I have now is a different type of confidence than I had years ago. And I'm more comfortable with who I am. And I think that is making me more visible to people. Let's talk about that, though. There's two things that you said that are important to talk about. One, 40 something being the age where you are the most comfortable in your own skin. But also, and and I'm speaking for myself, your body is changing. Yes. And it's resisting. Like, you can't really do the stuff you used to do. Like, I work out regularly. I was like, well, damn, would I be like a walrus if I didn't? Because I feel like, you know, sort of a, a continual plateau. And don't start, don't start calling me with your pills and juices and shit. Please. Cool out. Don't Shout out to the nothing. menopause people because right. you know your body and jack. Pre and <laughs> yeah, pre menopause and perimenopause is a booger. We're gonna, talk about that. That. We're gonna talk about that too. But um that's I think that's important to say. Like I feel my most um comfortable in my own skin but I also do feel a little self-conscious because my body right. is changing my body is different I look at my younger self but I also look at like Tracy Ellis Ross even though she hadn't had any kids so now late and Nia Long I like Nia Long and her most fluffy when she was fluffy she was sexy mm-hmm. I, was like, I do too I think she looked better fluffy honestly but I, th- I think that's what it is though it's the confidence and we can't compare ourselves to them because their job is to look a certain way true you know what I mean we but don't have it as a job it. nor do we have the time nor do we have the money or whatever and sometimes it's just you just got some damn good ass jeans I don't and it ain't a damn thing you can do about it but you I have to be happy but we're not immune to those pressures. Go ahead. Right. right. I, I want to be careful about minimalizing women's experiences with feeling invisible to just being a matter of being confident or being comfortable in your own skin. Mm-hmm. Because okay. when you let's look at black actresses over the age of 40, their invisibility comes not from not being confident in their looks or their ability it's an age. They're for not sure. considered. They're not yes. true. when a role comes up. Yes. They're not even, you know, considered. Even if you're yeah. even if it calls for a woman 40 and over, they're not really looking at you. They're looking at this younger act- actress who is so they can age up. They yeah. can age her. Yeah. You know? And then they get a older man. And that's not just and then for they black get an older man. That is so, for I would say all actresses. And, and, <laughs> in a lot of movies right now. Well, yeah. the, 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 the dynamic is weird. It's always this woman that's like 30 something, the guy's like 50. Right. right. And I am Seriously? specifically to women in our age group and up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, then there's women like me. I'm over 40. I have older children. My children don't need me the same way that they used to. Hmm. So then I become invisible in my own home until someone needs something mm-hmm. you know, because they, they're, they are not dependent on me like that. They are very they are very independent children, you know, and, and maybe it's different for people huh. that don't have kids, too, that maybe. and they have different um, but, issues with different types of invisibility. So that's people, why I don't. But it doesn't make it less than. Yeah, send the message that it is a matter of confidence or feeling comfortable right. in your own skin because anyone can tell you, I don't have a problem being the size that I am. Mm-hmm. If I do, right. you don't have a, you you don't have a confidence problem. <laughs> no, no. You know, neither and, one of y'all do. But anyway, and, and I don't. Have, I definitely don't have a problem being who I am. Whether mm-hmm. I'm being crazy in that moment, whether I'm having a dummy moment, whether I'm being the most brilliant person I can be in that in that moment. But that none of those things mean that there are not times when I don't feel invisible. Right. And Correct. I, w- I want to create a space for women to feel invisible in whatever form that that is. It's, it's not your mm-hmm. confidence, boo. It's not how you feel about yourself. There, there are external things that can happen to make you feel like you are not seen. 
Right. That's, and correct. I can see it happening on jobs. Like I mentioned that, you know, a lot of the millennials were looking up to me, but at the same time, don't think I'm not afraid because they're so focused. There was a time they were so focused on them where we didn't exist. And I'm wondering, am I going to lose my job every day? Because mm -hmm. they were like, well, millennials are going to rule everything. There was so much heavy marketing towards them and everything. And I'm like, well, what about Gen X? You know, it's like, we've contributed to the world. We've, we've done contributed greatly to the world, actually. Greatly to the world. Like everything uh -huh. that you are enjoying right now, a lot of that stuff came from us. So, yeah. but they gonna... don't acknowledge that. I'm going to say this. Um, one thing, one place or one area that I don't feel the weight of invisibility is in the workplace at this age. At, at one point, I was concerned um, that I was like aging out of the job market or something like that. But I but I don't but I don't feel that anymore. It was like a temporary blip. But I don't feel that way professionally. But. I want to say, too, for the record, the, that is the origin story of this very podcast, or at least the revival of it, is addressing the invisibility. Everybody goes hard and heavy for baby boomers. Everybody goes heavy for Gen X and millennial. I mean, sorry, not Gen, um, Gen, Gen Y. Z. And Gen Z. Gen Y, yeah. Gen Z, millennials. But we are kind of like dangling in the middle mm -hmm. unattended to yeah, that was part of the, yeah mm -hmm. well, it's part of the very 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 reason that we revived this podcast right somebody needs to be speaking to us yeah i post and that's one thing i can't say and i will bring out when you mention invisibility there is even when i try to put up you know hashtags you know i'm like yeah i'm gonna put up the hashtags to post what we do and more normally when you type half of a word it will always pop up because it's popular gen x is not a popular hashtag either like Fuck it doesn't know. pop out a lot <laughs> it's like Fuck nobody really <laughs> listens to us what did y'all say yeah I said, fuck them, though. <laughs> I'm like, and they're fucking algorithms. Shit. Fuck some uh, shit. You know, solo? I'm keep typing it, though. <laughs> keep on. One solo? You've been quiet. What's up, girl? Yeah, because I don't, I don't feel this. And so I want to just be sympathetic to the reality that it presents to people. I talk um, about it, though. To, talk to, about, to us talk and about to women, your... right? Like, um, Let's talk you know, about I, your there's, there, experience. So... So, so I, again, like kind of in solidarity with, with KC, like this isn't about confidence, but there is one thing about me is like, I'm an extraordinary confident person. You and are, girl. I believe fully in my exceptionality as a human, like mm -hmm. wholly. So I, and, and I remind people often that I'm exceptional. Mm -hmm. And so in the workplace, <laughs> I tell people, I know more than y'all. I did more shit than y'all. So I know you might know how to build a PowerPoint faster than me, but you don't know what to put in it. I know what to put in it. And that's what happens when you are when you are older, when you've been in the game 25 years. And so I I I feel empowered uh by my age and stage. And I don't let people forget it. And I let people know that there is a certain position that comes with being a woman of a certain age i lean into it that's why i talk honestly and candidly about my sexuality about money about all the stuff that nobody talked to us about right um and and you alluded to this uh chloe how based essentially the boomers just failed us they didn't set us up and get the hell out of the way and so my goal is to become invisible my goal is to be like blow the moon out the sky and this the fucking like, you have your like I just yeah. like I want to be I want to do all this stuff, pass the baton to somebody, and go live in obsolescence, right? Like, but the boomers won't do that for us. <laughs> the millennials <laughs> are gunning for it. Yeah. The millennials are gunning for our titles. So we are in this place where what we don't realize is that we have to compete for relevance, and we just feel like it's unfair to have to do that. And I'm like, and fuck that. I'm competing with you, bitches. Bring your a game. I'm kicking your room. ass. But we work. are relevant because we are the I'm breed. kicking your ass out here in the streets. I'm going to stay fine. You're going to compete with me for a 30-year-old man. Bring it. Like, I'm like, whatever it is. Like, I got my, I'm, I'm for real, y'all. I'm a gladiator in my heart. I'm like, so what's the game? Yeah. Oh, fuck it. 
Let's and go you ain't that. lying on that. You know, ain't lying and on that. Part, they are competing and, with us and don't know it. That's Can right. we just say right? they are competing and, and, with us and don't thing, know it? And I'm clear about it. And I think what happens is we feel like at a certain point, we should have earned the right to not compete. And I'm like, fuck you. I'm competing with you till I die if I have to. <laughs> you know, and some of that is... Like, I've been around women, y'all. I'm not lying. Like, my yoga teacher was 88, still doing his yeah. back business. I'm at the skating rink, y'all, with chicks who like 75 with a 22-inch waist Come on, and 40-inch hips. Bitch, you ain't finna shame me. I'm finna be out here, too. I'm not going to line dancing classes and chicks is 60 and 70. I'm on the side out of breath. Right. And they find booties, booties sitting up high. Girls up I'm like, so I ain't got to get old and jacked. Oh and no, the it's have so given it, us it, that. So it's They're been one of those things, old. yeah, right. And so some of it is just this ownership that no, and and for my and for my kids and my family, and my friends, my time is valuable. You gonna compete for it, my kids, my friends, right. you gonna compete for it, like because because if I allow people to take it for granted. They will. And so a lot of what feels like invisibility to me feels like being taken for granted for all that you are, all that you give, for the gifts that, that is you bring. It. And it I, is a part I'm of just it. not going to fucking let people, I'm That's not going to let people do it. I'm like, fuck you. You're going to realize I'm here. Started. And if you don't, then I will be invisible. Then it's your loss. My invisibility is your loss because I'm ghost and you're going to miss it. it. So, you hit the nail on the head when you said being taken for granted and being taken advantage of that is primarily yes. particularly at home i think you feel like that at home um i oh. primarily feel invisible so, like socially it's not like it used to be you know and maybe it is i don't know if i'm as confident as i am confident most days like 90 80 80 okay 85 percent confident some days i just don't feel like I, that great but most of the time i do but um you hit it like i said being taken for granted is really nailing it actually that was perfect right there that's what we feel taken yeah. for granted yeah. um, and, I, and I will say magazines need to do a better job with our generation and accomplishments I noticed they will put what the 30 year olds here are the 30 year old movers and shakers but what about all the 40 year olds who have changed their careers are doing new things and doing better things? We exist in a little corner. 50 year olds yeah, uh, do, you are doing things. Corner. It's like you get 40, they're going to stop at 39. And then it's like you're not relevant anymore to a magazine until you're like 60. And it's like, look how good you look at 60. Right. Well, what the fuck was I doing from 40 to 60? I'm been looking doing good, shit, being looking good, good starting new careers, it. going to school, inventing right. stuff. You're doing a lot in your 40s because for a lot of people, they finally got time and some money to do mm-hmm. some shit. Well, 40s you know? is also the era where you start feeling your mortality and you start really yeah. earnestly, mm-hmm. um, diligently seeking out your happy. That's why a lot of niggas get divorced around 38, 39, 40, early 40s because they're like, I'm not happy with this bitch. I'm not happy with this nigga. They're like, I want to be out. happy. And you start right. seeking out ways to be happy. You know, some of it is, is comes with some pain you know, and hurt and stuff like that. But we start looking at how we can be happy and we start feeling our mortality, you know, because maybe, you know, our body, again, body's changing, stuff's Mm -hmm. aching or whatever. Some friends might have died. People having heart attacks in our age group, which is crazy. Then or else, you know, your parents are aging. So you really start to feel that mortality or dying. And you really start to feel that mortality the weight of your own mortality and you're like look then you know for me my kid is younger than kc's so i'm like you know once my kids out of the house what am i fin-? you know that reality hit when she the first time she went to her dad's house i was like i ain't got really shit to do because <laughs> my schedule is like you know 50 to 60 percent of my schedule is hers right and, and or, or working around hers and that's kind of where i am now i have one child left in the house and so you know, in less than 12 months, that will be me. And I'm now trying to figure out what to do with this new phase of my life. You know, I left the corporate world. I have something else I want to do, but COVID, hello. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
you know, but I've got to figure out what the next version of me is, is going to look like. And it's, I promise you, it's not going to be me being some wise old sage sitting on a hill with a cane, Mm -mm. smoking a pipe, doling out wisdom to the young people. I'm not going to be kicking it with you though. Why I might give you some wisdom, you know, (laughs) So, on the date, I'm passing the blunt. Thing you're all exactly. missing, girls. Come on, I'm 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 not this. I'm not the great oracle just yet, right? But, but we some do. Of them need we do our have some wisdom. wisdom. Yeah, yeah, we do we have, do some have wisdom, wisdom more so, than they have. I mean, because I'm they. I'm not an yeah. oracle. I'm not great oracle like great grandmother. You know, right, right, right. Wise old granny. Yes. But we do have some wisdom to pass and we have things to learn from the younger generation. They teach us a lot. And the boomers, they just had a whole different mentality. They didn't talk as much as we do about things. They didn't communicate the way we do. They didn't really believe in therapy for Mm -hmm. the most part. So they just are a different type of generation. You know, they're just a different group of people. But I think our gift is bridging both of those together too it is because we we can flip flop with all of them Mm -hmm. which most of them cannot we can be with any age group Mm -hmm. and and they love us that's a good place to close we don't discount gen x we are versatile don't count us out like we're not invisible we're versatile we can flow in any which way because we're in the middle we are the the gap fillers and we bridge the gap between generations. So don't take people for granted. Yeah. Don't take us for granted, y'all. And just because we're not out here with our titties hanging out and shit, you know, I mean, is that where we are? <laughs> it is where we are. But <laughs> we ain't got to be out here with our titties hanging out and stuff. But if you, you do, down. just long as they be up, though. Mother baby up. True. Like I want to split them up nice. That's <laughs> right. You must. Shout out to one solo for getting me together um with a stop letting people take you for granted conversation. That yeah. right there. That yes. part. Because she that snatched my wig, baby. That part. That part. You too we, so, we too great. We too great to be taken for granted. Too great. So fuck y'all kids. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, boomer. Y'all, we're not boomers, though, so don't be saying that to us either. We're not boomers. We're Gen X. We're Gen X. So, shout <laughs> out so to shit. Gen X people. Thank you for listening. We are 3BC, powered by the Kazuki Network. This is your girl, Joy, and I am with one solo, Casey the Alchemist and Chloe. Thanks again for listening and mask on. Peace. 3BC, recorded at Kazukian Studios. Directed, produced, and distributed by Kazukian. Join the conversation at facebook.com slash 3BC. Mm-hmm.